Hi, I'm James with Bespoke Care Stuff. Welcome back to another video. And in this one, it's a, the sequel to Not a Sig. This is the Asia Electric G Limited F17 gas blowback pistol. So yeah, in the last video we looked at this pistol which is the F18 and I'm just going to grab it out quickly here so you can have a look which is a unofficial WE product that is a P3, P320 compact by SIG. This is called the Asia Electric G Limited F18 gas blowout pistol. Of course it was very good, we looked at that in a previous video. If you haven't seen that already go check it out. And then this is the F17 model. Now when we first had the F18s in, the F17 wasn't available to us, where well, now it is, so let's just grab it quickly out of the box. Ooh. So you'll see we've got a longer barrel here, we've got an extended magazine, it's the F17 model. This is basically based on the SIG P320 M17 model. This was the model that was put through the trials for the new uh, issued sidearm for the US military. I won't go too much into that because I'm sure many people out there can give a better backstory on that than I can. Uh, this is basically WE's version of that pistol under the brand Asia Electric G Limited. So you've got the P320 Compact and the P320 M17 both come and traded apart from it saying Newington USA on the right hand side and then 9mm by 19. Of course you can see some differences straight off the bat. Let's get a look at these things in the top down camera, we'll have a closer look and then we'll get to the chrono accuracy and then we'll be back on camera in just a moment. So here is the Asia Electric G Limited F17, more commonly known to me and you as the P320 M17, the gun that won the US trials for a new sidearm. This is the compact that we've looked at previously. They're the same frame size, they're just a different slide size and of course they come with a different magazine as well. This one being enabled for an RMR red dot sight on the top. So this pistol, polymer frame, metal controls, metal slide, metal barrel, metal magazine with a polymer cap on the bottom. Now don't believe what you see on many websites out there that this holds 26 plus one because it really doesn't. This magazine actually holds 19 rounds. Yes, one less compared to its smaller counterpart. So it's all to do with or what I can tell it's to do with is this extended follower here. So you're not actually getting much plus. It sits a little bit higher, I know it's hard to tell here, um, than the one on the shorter magazine. This holds 20 rounds, and when I say it holds 20 rounds, that's 20 rounds with a gap at the top to allow to not break the loading arm on the nozzle. This one holds 19 rounds with a gap. You can get 20 rounds in this, you can get 21 rounds in this. However, I don't recommend it because you run the risk of breaking your loading nozzle um, if you were to slam the magazine in the gun when the gun is slides forward. So you can see this long follower piece. And the reason why they've done it is so that you can get the cap on and off, of course. You do have a gap in the cap so you can gas it up without having to take this off. However, this magazine does look a lot better than its standard counterpart. I love this tactical sort of extended magazine look. It's, uh, it's very nice indeed. Let's just zoom you in a little bit better. So 19 rounds. Here we have the uh, M17. Obviously we've got safety lever on the both sides, which is ambidextrous. Also sort of doubles up as a, as a very small thumb rest. Slide release can be found on both sides. And I'm pretty sure the safe, the magazine release even, can be switched to the other side if you're a left-handed shooter. To take the, the slide off, what we do is we pull the slide back almost all the way, and then we can slide this round, let the slide forward, and it'll come off. Now everything in terms of the internal workings of the frame are exactly the same as the P320 Compact. They're the same frame altogether. It does have a little M here, like it's a, a choice for a, you know, an adjustable back strap or anything, but this is molded, it cannot be changed. 
So this being an extended version of the F18, let me just zoom you in as I do this. It has like a little plastic spacer on the spring guide, so you will have to maneuver this back before you pull the spring guide up, otherwise it won't pop out. We can then remove the inner and outer barrel assembly along with the hop unit. And this has like sort of their newer hot rubber design. I don't know if you'll be able to see it here, which is a curved nub, which uh, I've also seen on the Desert Eagles and a couple of their other new pistols. This is how it was set at the factory. I haven't messed with this. This is almost fully on. And then if I adjust it, because we've already done the firing demonstration, you can see how it disappears. So twos, two fives and threes, this pistol has not a problem at all. Uh, we know it over hops threes on the full setting, so you know, you dial that back down a little bit, you're gonna be absolutely fine. You know, we'd uh, I'd probably be pulling this out and just replacing all this heavy transport grease for silicon oil. Which brings me to our sponsor for this episode which is the Jaeger Precision Mech Oil. A lot of you have been asking when I've been saying it on various videos what I do use, because I said I was using something that I've been working on myself, which is the Jaeger Precision Mech Oil, which is a very good 100% pure silicon oil designed specifically for airsoft purposes. And this stuff has been in testing with me for well over 18 months just to make sure it's fine. It's very, very good stuff. I'll put a link in the description below where you can find it. So yeah, make sure you do some nice uh, silicon, uh, nice grey silicon oil or spray or anything like that. Highly recommend the Jaeger Precision Mech Oil, of course. And then you'll see that this has a gas blowback unit very comparable to the FNX45, where instead of being a sort of hollow nozzle that goes over a piston, which is secured in place by the blowback unit itself, the blowback unit itself is the cylinder and the, the, uh, the nozzle is basically the piston you'll see there. I much prefer this design over the other one. I think it's more reliable. Let's pop that back into place. Pop the spring guide back in. Once that's back in place we can just get this little sleeve and slide it down into the slide. So in terms of getting the red dot sights on this you will need a 2mm allen key. There are two screws on the back here what we want to do is you want to loosen these off. Once you've done that, the top plate will come off and you will see that the iron sight is sort of push fit into the cap itself. It's a very low profile cap and this is not a normal Airsoft, like a Chinese style RMR optic, like the ones you get for like sort of between 40 and 60 pounds, where you get from. Uh, what I have on my FNX45 will not fit this, but we'll get into the sizing that you'll need a little bit later on. What is strange with this is they've put a hole there. So you can see straight through into the blowback unit, which means you're going to get some grease and oil ejecting out of here, as you'll see, onto your red dot site. So what you want to do is make sure that you've got something perhaps covering this before you do that, um, because the last thing you want is this shooting silicon oil or grease straight into the bottom of your optic, especially if it's a nice fancy one, because I imagine this is going to be... Uh, real, real steel spec size. When you're fitting this, uh, say you're fitting a red dot sight, you obviously can't have this cap on there anymore. You can remove the rear sight and you can fix this back into place with the screws, but you will have a gap there like so, which is a bit unsightly. So what I'd probably be doing if I was fitting a red dot sight and I knew I was gonna have it on there indefinitely, I would probably cut this off um, unless someone out there comes with a better mounting plate, which I'm hoping they do. You'll see this just slides in there. 
it's almost like I feel like the um, the plate on this is needed to cover up the the blowback unit. Um, that's what it feels like. It's almost like every part of that sort of stops any dirt or crap getting into the blowback unit itself. It's all obviously time will tell whether they're going to come out with a mounting plate for this. Um, but we'll get into that just a bit later. So let's put the slide back on. All the way back, we notch that forward. There we go. So let's zoom you out there. So it's a very great feeling pistol. I'm not a SIG fan. I can I can appreciate a SIG, whether it's a 226, a 228, a 229, or some of the special edition ones that some companies do. I can appreciate what it is, but it's never for me being a comfortable sidearm. This is a more modern, with it being a more modern SIG, you can see where they've brushed up a lot of the design aspects to make it more comfortable. And this feels completely different to a 226, a 228, or a 229. I would much prefer this, in my opinion, and I think you'll see from the results in a moment that uh, the performance is on point as well. So the trigger on this is very much the same as the P320 Compact. Take up, you've got the wall, break, reset, break. Trigger is very crisp on it. It's very predictable. And dry fire this, you'll be able to see. You can actually get some rapid fire shots in with this. Double tapping is going to be super snappy, quick and easy. Love this pistol to bits. Let's get to the chrono test and then straight after the chrono test I'm going to go to the accuracy test. With the accuracy test, 0.2 gram BBs for the first test, 0.3 gram BBs for the second test and then I even go as far to go to our new target which is this size for the third test. So uh, for the chrono, 0.2 gram BBs green gas. Uh, I didn't actually top this magazine up so you'll be seeing it as just a, a room fill after I've been firing it. And we'll get that up on screen and then I'll be back in camera to talk more about this lovely sidearm. You'll have seen from the accuracy test as well, if you've got this far in the video, that the factory from the factory the hop on this pistol was set to fully on. Now that may affect the chrono readings. This pistol, when I chronoed it, was set to off, so it may be a little bit higher, but you've still got plenty of wiggle room there to be sight legal. So I was very excited for this release, which I've probably already mentioned many times. And when the, we had the P320 Compact, I was obviously very excited to use it and get to grips with it. It is a great pistol, but I was more interested in this one. And this is basically like my own little mini trial to find myself a replacement, not a replacement sidearm, but a new sidearm that can contend with my FNX45. We might do that in a, a video later down the line. So this is the full length. Straight off the bat, you're probably as, as surprised as I am. This pistol holds 20 rounds. Now that's 20 rounds without completely jamming it up um, because when you fill in these gas boat magazines you shouldn't ram as many rounds in there as you can. You should always leave a gap at the top because when you smack it into the gun, of course, the bit that sits here is the loading part of the nozzle. And if you've overloaded the magazine, you smack it into the gun, you risk a chance of breaking it. So I always test the magazines with full magazine with a gap at the top just so the nozzle can give you that extra bit of release uh, so you're not going to break anything. So that one with a gap at the top we could filter 20. 
out yet the extended magazine we can only filter 19. Now I could get 20 rounds in there but what you need to be sure of when you're putting 20 rounds in this magazine is that when you load it the slides back. Now if you put 20 rounds in this magazine and you insert it with the slide back you're probably not going to run into an issue whatsoever but I would never do that just in case for some reason in the field I ran this into the gun it's not locked back for some reason the last thing I do is break a loading nozzle so one of the main features of this this pistol why I was so interesting it was because of that extended mag I mean, it just looks so much better it gives a greater feel to the magazine and it's very militaristic style tactical looking it's what a lot of shooters are doing in the US now a lot of real gun manufacturers they're doing extended mags which is very very nice the other, the other is the extended barrel length slightly to give a bit more of a, a boost in FPS and of course the adjustability of putting a red dot sight on there. So really surprised by that that you can only get 19 rounds in this magazine. I imagine it's because to take the base plate off you've got to pull this little tab down here and this is very very long so it's extended so that you can do that. and when you can pack the spring all the way down. That coupled with the fact that this narrow is this channel is narrower, so it do, it instead of double stacking the rounds more side by side like that, they sort of sit on top of each other a slight bit more so you can see gaps. That is of course going to bring your capacity down as well. But you know the chrono results are fine. Uh, I didn't actually the, the pistols have been gassed while I've been messing with them for the past week. When I did the chrono, I did not top them up with gas, I probably should have done, so just so you're aware of that as well. But the readouts are usually about the same, about the 300 to 310 mark. So, getting to the accuracy results, the, the hop was set to full. So, 0.2s, you know, you're going to curve up. 0.3s were even curving up, so I did as best as I could. I didn't want to change it, I just wanted to shoot it as it was out of the box. Of course, this then gives you the representation of when you fine tune this hop, you can get this gun shooting even better. You'll see from the accuracy of the test now, I've got an even smaller target, so I'm not sure if you'll see this because of the colour, the light on the uh, on me at the moment, but point twos, we've got a grouping of about this size, 10 rounds, point threes, you know, I managed to get it here after finding out where the shots were landing, so I uh, was aiming, I actually overcompensated, I was aiming down here, they landed up here, and then I brought my aim up and I've got a better gripping like this. What I want to do is turn that hop slightly off to get a nice flat trajectory and rest assured I know I'll be getting better results. Now the new little uh, metal target with the paper inserts here, I actually aced the target. The uh, the round was just outside of the, cross, the uh, bullseye and then you'll see a grouping just here as well. So it was just a few rounds I had left in the magazine. Shot them at this target. I mean that is small. That is smaller than a head, so at 15 meters no problem at all, especially when you've got the hop dialed down as well. So um, I'm going to go a few bits that I've probably gone on the TDC just so you're aware, just so I've covered them all uh, because I record the TDC bit after this, which is funny enough. So the short magazine in the P320 Compact, long magazine in the P320 Compact, the M17 obviously takes the long mag and the short mag. The frames are pretty much identical. I haven't been able to ascertain any kind of difference in the frames. It is literally all slide related to compared for the difference. In terms of the red dot sight, this won't accept your generic uh, like Chinese copy or um, cheaper RMRs. The spacing is actually closer together, so if I was to take the red dot sight off my FNX, it won't fit this. But thanks to the guys at Shield PSD, they do like red dot sights. They're also the importers for Crytac in the UK. Um, I asked them to help me out if they, if they could send me some uh, measurements of what their red dot sights are which are more like real steel spec and when they sent the measurements over I can confirm that this is a real steel spec sizing for an RMR so the only thing that was a bit strange was you undo the back sight and the back sight is part of what well, it's attached to this plate here which covers the mounting for the RMR um, it's a bit weird because once you take that off, the, the, the dot sights, the rear dot sights are sort of fixed into position here. You can then put your red dot sight on, but if you want to put the, um, the rear sight on just as a bit of reassurance that you know, uh, you're know you screwing into that and it's holding the blowback unit in place, whatever, um, you will have to take this adapter plate off, which it will go on, but there's a gap underneath, so you'll have a, 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 a sort of piece here 
where it looks like it's floating. It looks very, very strange. Don't know why they've done it this way. It would have been nice if they'd have included uh, another rear sight in the box that didn't have this front plate off. This could be very easily rectified. Um, if, you're, if you're certain that you're going to run a red dot sight and you've got one that fits, I would probably just cut this plate off and then just fit it in front of the, uh, the dot sights there. Uh, I'm going to get a couple of uh, other Chinese star RMRs in that say they're different just to see if we can get some budget options for you guys. But uh, as, far as, uh, as far as I've found, this is a, a real spec RMR mounting. So anything in terms of like real Trigicons, Vortex, all that good stuff. Shield are probably going to be your best bet in the UK. They do make really good iron sights, uh, sorry, red dot sights, uh, which are used a lot in the sort of practical pistol communities. So I'll be, of course, talking to Shield about getting one of those for these if I pick one up and see if it passes the trial yet. So hope you've enjoyed this M17. I am honestly really, really impressed with the performance of this thing. I know it's a bit hard to, to sort of show on camera. You've got to kind of take my word for it, um, which you have to do with a lot of YouTubers these days. But, you know, if, if, there's, if there's something that's not quite right, you know on this show I will call it out. So the red dot site is a bit of a cop-out because you're going to have to spend a lot more money. Real RMR sites probably double in price compared to what you pay for this pistol. Uh, for the cheap ones, you know, Trigicon RMRs, the £450, £500 and, and beyond. Um, so that's a bit of a... A con, I mean, the biggest con in this pistol, in my sort of opinion, is the mag. The extended mag, it should be holding 25, 30 rounds at least. I mean, all the, the Chinese websites that, that list these pistols label these magazines as 26 plus 1. I'm sorry, it's just not the case. This one's going to hold 20. This one's going to hold 19 because it's got that sort of extended follower for the getting the base plate off. Um, would it put me off buying the gun? Absolutely not. Would I go, would I buy the M17 and then get the shorter mags? Absolutely not, because I don't, I don't like, functionality wise, it's, they're, they're the same magazine. Um, but for me, for the ease of holding and, and pulling the mags out and, you know, for the, the tactical look that they have, I would be using the extended mags, even though they're all 19 rounds. I mean, let's face it, most sidearms carry about between 20 and 25 rounds. So losing five or six rounds, um, I mean, if you've got one in the chain, that's fine. It's not the massive end of the world. Um, I'm not really too sure on the base plates if they hold any more gas. This is a very efficient magazine. I've been able to shoot two to three, when we had the really hot spell just recently, two to three magazines worth of uh, BBs to the one fill of gas, and it still had more in it to go. So efficiency-wise, they're very, very good. Um, which one would I choose if I was choosing between the two? I'd go with the M17 because I'm looking for a full size sidearm. If I was looking for a compact, the F18 or the P320 compact would be a great choice as well. Um, so, you, you know, you're not going to lose depending on which one you're, you're looking for. Would I get both? Yes, I would. Um, would I run the extended mags in the compact? Mm, probably not. No, I would only be using these with the M17. So, me being me, I'd probably get two different size mags, so I'd have the compacts for this. Uh, with the adjustability, if I did want to carry more mags for either side arm, I could always pull them out of this gun using that gun without uh, any cons whatsoever. So I really do like this pistol. The features are great. The M17 to the P320 compact does sound better. It has a good ka-ching. See if I can do that on the camera for you now. Let's just make sure this is clear. So clear on the M17, clear on the compact. So here's the compact. Usual gas web at pistol noise, but the M17, it sort of has that nice punchy kick and it has that sort of metal clang at the end. Much like the FNX has got, the FNX has got that really metallic clang at the end and it really does make the pistol, in my opinion, sound a lot better. So. Would I be, this is going to be, I know I'm going to probably nerd out here, but guys, you have to bear with me. This is going to be a contender for a new sidearm if I was looking for one. I do want to sort of extend my sidearm range, and I, am, I have been looking for a while. Uh, there's a few pistols that have stood out so far, and this by far is one of the, the biggest ones. Um, perhaps I could 
figure out a way to extend the capacity on this thing. I don't know, we'd have to have a look at it. But uh, I'm really impressed with this. It's everything that the F18 was and much more. And, you know, I love all the features on it. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode. This is the AEG Limited F17 gas blowout pistol. This being a, a, a copy of the P320M17. Uh, so thanks for tuning in, like, subscribe, do all that good stuff, hit the bell notification. I've got loads of videos coming up and we'll see you in the next episode. Thank you.